Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial of uh, Grasshopper. Uh, today we are going to uh, work on a shape like this. Um, we're going to make a curve and then a surface out of it with a revolution. And then we are going to apply a Voronoi on it. And as you can see in the details, uh, they have this kind of uh, texture. So we are going to um, uh, scale the Voronoi's uh, the Voronoi cells and then we are going to move them out of the surface and then we're going to create the whole um, the whole object or the whole uh, mesh okay we're going to try to make it fully solid so we can uh, uh, 3d print it if if we wanted to so the first thing that I did was uh, to create this curve in uh, Rhino uh, it can have any shape. Uh, actually, when we finish the algorithm, we will be able to apply it to any surface we want. Uh, at the moment, we don't have the surface yet. We're going to create the surface on Grasshopper. So I'm going to bring this curve to Grasshopper. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, revolve it. Okay, I'm gonna do a simple revolution. We could do this in Rhino as well. Uh, I like doing it in Grasshopper as uh, I feel have more control on it, but uh, we can do it in Rhino as well. It might actually be even quicker, uh, but I just prefer doing it in Grasshopper. So I'm just uh, doing the revolution and the axis is gonna be, um, I'm creating an SDL line uh, starting from the origin, so I'm gonna get a construction point, construct point, which by default uh, comes already uh, on the origin. So I'm gonna take it to the start of that line, and then I'm going to uh, connect everything. Okay, so I have the surface already. So if I change that curve on uh, Rhino, uh, my surface is gonna change. So if I made the surface, the fully surface on Rhino, I wouldn't have to do all, all of this process. I would just have to import it as a normal, as a, as a, yeah, as a normal surface. So I'm going to turn this off. And the next thing that I'm going to do is create that Voronoi. So the Voronoi um, that I'm going to use is the uh, Voronoi 3D. Okay, and the Voronoi 3D asks me for some points that uh, we are going to randomly create on that surface and for that I'm going to use a component called populate geometry so populate geometry if I connect it here our geometry just creates uh, random points on that geometry I can control the amount of points with the count and I can control how they are uh, distributed uh, not control it because it's going to be randomly but I can change that distribution uh, by changing the seed number. So I'm going to create a slider that goes from, let's say, 50 to 300. And I'm going to connect it to the count. Okay. So if I connect that population to the Voronoi, uh, that's going to create a box, a bounding box, and it's going to create all of those cells or Voronoi, Voronoi cells. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, as that box is, uh, it, I mean, it's uh, bounding the my object or the points of my object, okay, um, it has, uh, the cells are not complete, completely uh, intersecting my object. So what I'll do is create my own bounding box and scale it, make it a slightly bigger than the object. So. I'm going to get a, a bounding box component. Uh, the content of that box is going to be my initial surface. I'm going to uh, turn this off so you can see what's happening. Uh, sorry, the surface, not the curve. There we go. And now uh, it's that, that bounding box is exactly intersecting my object, but I want it to be slightly bigger because those intersections can give me trouble sometimes. So I'm going to scale it. And 
the center of my scale the geometry I'm going to scale is this one okay and the center of my scale is going to be the middle of that bounding box so I'm going to get the volume component that gives me the center sorry I need the center and then I need to be the factor of scale it needs to be uh, above one so I'm going to make a slider of 1.1 and that's that's even better okay so the next thing that I'm going to do is connect this geometry to uh, our Voronoi's we're going to see anything because we turn it off I'm going to turn it back on okay and the next thing that we are going to do is find the intersection of our surface with the Voronoi cells so for that I'm going to use a component that it's called uh, brep brep uh, here and I'm going to connect the cells on brep A and then the surface on brep B and I'm going to turn this off sorry not disable okay and now then we have uh, those in intersections I'm going to turn the surface off okay and um, let's uh, suppose that we want these curves okay I, I mean we need to close them so to do that um, what I'm gonna do is find the the corners or the vertices of all of those curves with the component called discontinuity okay and by doing that I'm just gonna create polylines with those points so if I turn this off and I turn this off as well I have those polylines that I can close by right clicking on the closed input of the polyline and setting the volume to true I want them to be closed polylines now as default it's set as uh, false it's not they're not closed so to do that I'm going to click here on invert what this invert does is just invert the volume that it's already set by default so it's going to be true and now those polylines are all closed okay so that being done uh, the next thing that I want to do is scale those cells scale those polylines okay I'm going to make shrink them and then move them uh, perpendicular to our main surface on each of those uh, points so to do that uh, what I'm going to do is scale okay I'm going to get the scale component and what I want to scale are these points okay the center of that scale what I will do is I'm going to create uh, a patch or patches on each line each, okay on each curve so I'll get the patch component and connect it to the polyline okay and I have patches or yeah surfaces on each of those uh, curves and with those surfaces I can use the component area to get the center of each of them and that's going to be the center of my scale so I'm going to turn some things off uh, the area for instance and this is our scale of those uh, polylines I'm going to create a scale factor of uh, 0 0.2 uh, until 1 and with this component I'm going to create new polylines I'm going to get the polyline again
and I'm going to connect it here. I'm going to turn this off and I need those lines to be closed. So I'm going to right click on the closed uh, input and I'm going to invert it so they are closed. And by moving this slider of the scale, we can make them bigger or smaller. And the other thing that we said is that we need to move them out of, uh, of our main surface. So I'm going to get the move component. Okay. And that motion, that vector, okay. Uh, I mean, what, what I want to move is this, but the direction of my movement, I turn this off, is going to be uh, normal or perpendicular to our main surface. So to do that, uh, I'm going to use a component called BREP closest point. That what it does, it's uh, we connect a BREP, a BREP on it, and we tell we tell it uh, what points we want to evaluate, and we get some uh, different outputs. And the one that we want is the normal, the uh, vector, okay, which is this one. So I'm going to get a, an amplitude component, which is going to help us create that vector. Okay, so this normal is going to go to vector, and our amplitude is going to be the distance uh, away from the main surface. Let's create a slider that goes from 0 to maybe 10. And then we're going to connect it to amplitude. Okay, so where do we want to evaluate our surface? So we are going to use each of these centroids and the sur our surface is going to be the main one. Okay, and when I connect this here, I'm moving those um, lines, in this case, inwards. If I wanted them to move outwards, which is the case now, uh, we need to change the sign of that slider. Okay, we can add a negative component or we can just uh, edit the, the slider. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off. Okay, and now we have those, uh, those curves coming out of the surface. So now what we want is uh, we have to connect those uh, smaller curves to each of their uh, bigger curves or their parent curves, okay? So to do that, we are gonna create a loft, okay? So I'm gonna get a loft and the curves I wanna connect are these ones with these ones right here. And I'm going to start turning things off. This I'm going to turn it off. The patches, I'm going to turn them off. And these lines, I'm going to turn them, sorry, not disable them. Okay. And turn it off. Okay, so now that I have uh, those surfaces, I'm going to make them a mesh. Okay, so I'm going to go to the uh, mesh section and we have a component here that converts uh, BREP into a mesh. So I'm going to connect it there. Okay. And that being done, I can um, offset that uh, mesh. The thing, um, yeah, so we can go to uh, the Weaverbird plugin and then we have the offset. But before doing that, what I'm going to do, if you put your uh, mouse on, on that mesh, you're going to see that we have many meshes. Okay, we have a tree coming out of it. So what I'm going to do is join those meshes with each other. 
With that, I'm going to use another component of Weaverbird, which is Weaverbird Join Meshes and Wealth, which is just going to join them. Uh, so I'm going to connect this here and I'm going to flatten it. And you will see that the output of uh, the join meshes is going to be a single mesh. Okay, and that single mesh is the one that I'm going to connect to the offset. I'm going to turn this off. And then I'm going to control this, the offset distance. Offset distance here. It's 5 now. I'm going to create a slider that goes from 0 0.5 to 5. And same as uh, with the move component, if we wanted to um, offset it in a different direction, we can, in the other direction, we can just add a negative component here. In this case, we're offsetting it outwards. We can offset it inwards, okay? And if we wanted to make it uh, smoother, a smoother, um, mesh, we can just use the Weaverbird Scott Move Clark subdivision. It just creates a subdi subdivision, okay, a subdi out of that mesh, and it just creates a um, smoother surface, okay. So, that all of that being done, we can go back and we could change that curve, or we can just input our own surface. Uh, we can change the number of uh, divisions. If we uh, make this number bigger, we're going to have uh, smaller uh, or more subdivisions, okay? Because we're going to have more points for the Voronoi. Then we can uh, change uh, the size of each of those uh, uh, cells, okay? Or the, uh, the, the, the outer cells. We can change how far out they are coming out of the main surface and then we can control the thickness of our object okay all right i hope you liked this uh, tutorial and i'm looking forward to see you again and read your comments